In this video, we're gonna look at my favorite four-point lighting setup for advertising portraits. And this is a lighting setup I use time and time again because it's really effective. So if we take a look at the images I've got on screen, um, these were all shot for a campaign um, that uh, I was commissioned to do where, that involved uh, shock or surprise or anger. And you can see that emulated there through the expressions of the uh, characters and the models in the images. Now, um, the campaign required a consistency of lighting and the shots weren't all done on the same day. As a matter of fact, some of them were done months apart. So what I had to do was use a lighting setup that was clearly repeatable, uh, but gave the right definition and uh, sculpting to the light that would work well for this style. And if we look at the three images, you can see that actually, if you study them closely, that the lighting setup is very similar. One thing you'll notice if we look at the, this chap here, you'll see the uh, lighting coming down the side of the face here, down the edges here, down the edges here, but then the front lighting working equally as well to give a nice bit of punch on the image. There's also a nice gradient glow on the background. And if we move on and have a look at this one, you'll see on this one it's exactly the same. We have the edge lighting down the side of the subject, down the side of the model, punchy lighting onto the face and the front, gradient glow behind them on the background as well. And then finally on the other one uh, that was part of this series, edge lighting down the side of the model, punch onto the front and the face, gradient glow on the background. And this particular lighting setup is really good for making things pop and things really sort of ping out in the image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through the exact lighting setup on this specific image that I've got on screen now, but actually you'll find it's exactly the same lighting setup for all three images. So I have an image open on screen now, which you can see we've got the actual image in the bottom corner there. And then this is a plan view, lighting view of the setup. So we have our model to start with. So then we introduce our gray background behind the model, which in this case was just a nine foot colorama, dark gray paper roll. And then we have our camera, which was directly in front of our subject, symmetrical. And then if we move on, the first light we're going to look at is the background light. And the background light was creating a glow onto our background in round about that area. And that was just feathering off nicely. So it was just a standard uh, 70 degree angle reflector spreading out and hitting the background, creating that glow behind our subject. The next light is a light from the left, which was a 30 by 120 size strip box or soft box. Uh, so that's quite a tall, thin one. And that's coming in from the back of the model at a 45 degree angle. And there's also one on the right hand side of the model. And that is emanating, the light's emanating in that direction as you can see there. And if we look at the subject, you can see the edges of the jacket catching the light, the edges down here, the edges in the side of the face and down the other side and on either side of the hand, as you can see there. And you can see that's a symmetrical, even light. So it meant that these two lights here and here were set at the same power, equal power to give an even light down the side of the model. The next part of the puzzle and the key light is the beauty dish. And the beauty dish was a 70 centimeter silver beauty dish that was on a boom arm coming in from the side. And that was in front of the model, obviously, at a 45 degree angle and about a meter, meter and a half away from the model's head and up slightly higher as well. And that light shining downwards onto the model for a natural lighting direction. And um, that 45 degree angle means that that lights just coming into this area and the, the way the beauty dish works is this is more concentrated light so it's keeping the light in this area and it's got a nice level of punch and sparkle to it 
And then what happens with a beauty dish, as you look here, you'll see that there's a, you know, the concentration of light is in this upper area that we want. But you'll see the light falls away more quickly in the lower part of the body there. And here is the direction of light of the beauty dish, and it's more focused forwards, and it doesn't spread out as much as a softbox would. It's more directional um, with its lighting. And also, because the beauty dish is relatively close to our model, it's not having any significant impact on our background because of the inverse square law. And once we get the exposure correct for the model, then uh, the diminishing exposure value of the light reaching the background isn't really uh, having any effect there. And then additional to that, uh, which were very important, are these two poly boards that you can see me bringing in either side here. Let me just move this image out of the way. So there I'm bringing in these poly boards and I'm shooting through the gap between the poly boards. And these are, serve two purposes. The key one is to stop flare because we have light coming from these soft boxes, which will be coming straight into the camera lens from either side and that would cause me flare or could cause me flare. So by using the poly boards and bringing them in quite tight or just to the distance necessary, we can usually block any direct light from those uh, background 30 by 120 soft boxes, block them from shining directly into the lens and that gets rid of the problem of flare. Um, however, there is another purpose that those poly boards serve and that is bounce back as well. So they bounce back a little bit of light from the poly board, from the softbox to the poly board and back onto our subject, which just lightens up the shadows if the shadows were a little bit aggressive from the beauty dish. And of course, if you don't want that bounce back from the poly boards, then you just flip the black side of the poly board facing in towards your subject and then you won't get that light bounce back. And then finally, the last piece was the reflector panel. There was a small silver re reflector panel lower down below the model that was bouncing light back up onto our subject. And if we look closely in the eyes, you can see that light catching in the eyes. And the reason that was important was because we've gone for a, an aggressive um, expression and crinkled face um, and that style with the beauty dish would really increase the shadows um, under the eyes and under the eye uh, ridge here um, because the face is scrunched up. So bouncing a little bit of light back in there um, alleviated that problem. The other problem that it alleviated, if I open up the um, higher resolution shot, is that you'll see that because of the angle of the face and the tilt of the head, we weren't getting any catch light in the eyes from the beauty dish itself because the head was tilted down and the face scrunched up. So by using the reflector, and that reflector below is bouncing light from the beauty dish back up, we managed to retain some sort of catch light there in the eyes as well. So that was how that image was achieved. That was the lighting setup, and that's also exactly the same lighting setup for how this image was achieved and for how this image was achieved as well. Now, you may be wondering uh, about the expression on the parrot and also on the dog. Well, those uh, were created by a little bit of post-production work. So the, uh, the dog was made to bark by um, giving uh, or uh, showing dog treats. And then we captured a shot when the dog was barking. And then in post-production, a little bit of man manipulation and liquefy to the dog's eyebrows and mouth expression to give it the sort of shocked look as well. And then, of course, the same with the uh, parrot version as well. And then finally, for the angry man version, the steam that's coming out of his ears was actually shot separately by shooting uh, steam coming out of a kettle against a dark grey background. And then that steam was put into uh, an overlay blend mode on top of this shot either side uh, to create the steam coming out the ears. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.